All right. So this is the router clutter tank on other operating systems. This is Ubuntu 12.04. Um, LTS 64 bit and it's not completely patched. I tried to put the patches on yesterday and there was a long list and I ran out of energy. So there I have an excuse as it goes down. This is Windows 7, Service Pack 1, patched, and it includes the patch um, that Microsoft designed specifically to stop this problem. Here's Windows XP, fully updated as of yesterday, with the optional IP version 6 components. But there is no patch for router advertisement floods available for Windows XP, so it doesn't have one. Now, this is 2008 server, and I expected the patch to come down with normal Windows updates, but it doesn't. It's an optional update with this KB number. But if you put that optional update on, you then have Microsoft's IPv6 readiness patch, which is intended to stop this vulnerability, and we'll see how well it works. So here's the attack. This is the new fast and dangerous attack. Flood router, and off it goes. And as you can see, the server froze briefly. Now it is thinking about it, and pretty much now you're losing network connections. So it's not at a dead stop, but Task Manager is not even moving. The animated GIF is barely moving. It is not withstanding this attack without some degree of damage. But it's not dying completely. And we'll come back to it later and see what a little over exposure does to it. Windows XP has seems to have lost the processor power to move this GIF, and it's not moving these pings anymore. And Task Manager doesn't look like it's updating anymore either. So I think this guy is frozen. Let's see if the mouse even moves. Well, the mouse moves, so that's something. Um, if you try to get down and click the Start button, though, it only moves like an inch. It won't move any further. So that machine is in pretty bad shape right now. Here's Windows 7 with the patch, and it's still the same. The mouse does not move. The GIF does not move, the pings don't move, Task Manager doesn't even detect that it's using up all the CPU, if it is. Here's Linux. Linux is still communicating. The pings are scrolling by, the GIF is moving, Linux is perfectly fine. The CPU is um, load average. Someplace in here there's going to be idle. CPU, 75% idle. So it's completely shrugging off this attack. Um, and so. Here's the case. Now I think all the Windows machines are pretty much frozen. So the patch doesn't protect you too much. But what I saw before, and let's try it again, is when you stop the attack, it recovers quickly. This thing is now moving again. And pretty soon that thing starts moving again. So this means you actually have usable CPU cycles again. And now those pings are moving. Now it does seem to have lost its network connection. But at least the CPU is back. Although in practice, a server losing its network connection is not a small matter. Now, XP seems to have survived it in a similar manner. It comes back quickly, loses the network connection, but the CPU comes back down. And the same thing with Windows 7. You get CPU cycles available again, but you've lost your network connection, um, at least the IP version 6 network connection. Now, see if we can get on with IP version 4. That would make some sense. Yeah, we have IPv4, so the only effect of this attack was to disable IPv6, and that you might think of as a feature more than a bug, really. Obviously, if people are doing this kind of nonsense in your IPv6 network, it might be time to go down to IPv4. The Linux machine seems just fine. So, uh, if anything else exciting happens over here, no, the only thing is none of these guys, oh, sure, we'll see if you still do IPv4. And it does. So the server is back to operation over IPv4. It just is no longer connected over IPv6, and that's kind of understandable. So that's the result of the patch. But this unpatched XP seems to be doing just about as well. The same story with XP. But it does not crash and stay flooded for a long time like it used to. Anyway, that's the result of the patch.